Oh man, you're here? No, no, you don't need to open the door for me. I, I'm a real man, I can open my own door. I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, but you know, I'm filming a shot here. I'm oh, filming shit. myself opening the door. So now you're on camera, right? <laughs> How's it going, guys? Looks like a senior's hour now. Looks like a punch in <laughs> face while I can still do it hour. That's what it is. <laughs> hey, hey, Sam. You just did an intro, did you? Did you? Duh. You just did an intro, did you? I, I just did an intro. Can I be in it? No. Train the muscles, not the joints. I'm just so huge in my own mind. Huge in my own mind, that's all that matters. I can't wait to get self-confidence from Sam. Yeah. Welcome to Natural Gallant Bodybuilding. My name is Jason Gallant. So as Sam so eloquently put it, welcome back to Natural Gland Bodybuilding. You're here with Jason Gallant. Although I never say Jason Gallant, that's what I was going to correct him with. I, I never say you're here with Jason Gallant. I just say you're here with Natural Gland Bodybuilding. So there you go. My name's Jason. Because some of you guys didn't know that because I noticed in the comments, some people are calling me Joe. They're calling me Tom. They're calling me, uh, you know, different names because they have no clue what my first name is. So yeah, my name's Jason. There you go. I thought I'd just clear that up. The next issue I want to clear up is that... I am using footage from a different time period. This channel right now is like Doctor Who meets bodybuilding. Natural bodybuilding and Doctor Who. That's, that's what's going on right now because we are now going back in time and this footage is from April 15th. Like I told you guys, I've got so much footage that I haven't actually put together. So you're going to be getting it anyway because it's still high quality stuff. As you can see, very high quality stuff here. I thought I would bless you with it and go back into time. Yeah, so I guess this is like a science fiction-y natural bodybuilding channel now. So you're welcome for that. You're welcome for that. Uh, there's no new series coming out on Netflix anytime soon, but just in case uh, you know, this right here is when I started to venture into the science fiction fantasy realm of YouTube. There you go. All right, you've seen it here, folks. We'll see what happens now. Uh, let the offers come in with uh, new uh, seven picture deals from Disney or something like that, who knows? and then they will butcher my channel just like they did with Star Wars. Yeah, that's kind of how it works. Actually, speaking about science fiction and fantasy, I actually wrote a fantasy book years ago, a fantasy novel, and it's on Amazon, and it's called The King of Dragons by Jason Galant. So if you guys want to check it out, check it out. It's cheap. It's like I made it as cheap as possible. It's like three bucks or something like that. But if you want to check it out, just check it out if you're a big fantasy fan. Hopefully you enjoy it. But let's get back to the workout. As you can see, I'm doing about five sets of flat dumbbell presses, and I worked my way up to the 120s, and I'm having some fun with that. I'm keeping the tension on the chest. As you notice, I don't squeeze up at the top because... Again, it's gonna be different for each person, but for me, when I squeeze, you see how the dumbbells start to come more towards my eyes and that angle, I start to engage more the front delt and I find the tension leaves my chest altogether. Now, I know that sounds funny to somebody that doesn't have that experience happening, but for me, that's the case. So, of course, this is the way I've always done dumbbell presses and so my chest has never been my weak link. But the reason why my chest is a little bit more of my weak link now is just because of the shoulder instability like I've talked about. So if you guys are curious about that, just watch the video injuries that I've had. And that has played a little bit of a role. Now on inclines, I find if I squeeze up a little bit more, I do get a little bit more chest activity in that. So this is why my range of motion will change. I don't have an absolute rule on every single exercise, like only do partials or only do this, only do that. It's more based on how you are feeling the exercise. So don't try to lift like me. I always say this, don't lift exactly the same as I do. Lift the way that feels right for you and you're gonna get a lot more results. So it's more about open eye, Danielson. Open eye, open eye, right? You have to use your own awareness. <laughs> now this also begs the question, uh, I've had lots of debates with people on the internet and everywhere and I talk about science is basically observing uh, something happening and then noticing the result and they say oh that's just anecdotal that's just your experience that doesn't mean anything right so basically they're saying the experience of a human being means nothing so this is a, a really 
funny sort of conundrum out there because what's happening right now is people are being programmed into not believing their own experiences. And I'm not saying that people's experiences are always telling the whole truth either, but what I'm saying is that they do offer some validity to whether something is valid or not for you, right? So if I'm noticing something is working for me in the gym, uh, such as a range of motion or such as a certain type of program or workout, and it is producing the actual result, then there must be some truth in what it is that I'm doing. There are people that are the left brain people out there that will say, well, show me the study. Otherwise your results don't exist, even though they're clearly measurable. They'll say, no, it has to be backed up with a study, which is a, it really is a form of insanity. Actually, it's a disconnection from reality. So we have this thing going on where people are using studies as the truth, but studies weren't meant to be the truth. Studies were meant to offer a piece of the whole picture, but they're not showing the entire picture because no study can offer every single variable. And I mean, studies don't include everything, right? Uh, they don't include every single person, every single genetic sort of deviation. They don't include, I mean, there's a million things we could talk about, but the bottom line is that your own experience must also be valid. If anything, I'd say it's the most valid. And if you're getting results from something, it doesn't matter what piece of paper is shown to you. It doesn't mean that the piece of paper is telling the truth right? Obviously it can't be because you're noticing a totally different result. Now, of course, I'm not saying that studies have no relevance. I think studies are a great place to start and a great place to develop a general understanding of some general pattern of what might be happening in any particular situation. It's just that you don't want to trust that it's telling you the entirety of what is going on because there are so many different variables and interpretations of the results of the study that can be skewed in one direction or another, depending on the person's point of view. So you want to incorporate this type of thinking in, in a way that also allows you to experience something more fully and then see if this is valid or not, or if the study is applying to you, or if there is a, a hole in that study, if there's some sort of missing link. So on that note, let's get back to working out. As you noticed, I did about eight sets for chest, eight or so sets. I, I did about three sets of dumbbell incline, and now I'm doing some lat pull downs. Now I'm stretching all the way up here just to show you a little bit of a narrower grip and what it looks like when I stretch up. See, this is what happens when I straighten the arms. Now, what I find is that when I stretch up to the top, I noticed that it just causes a lot more elbow sort of uh, tension as well as I start to bring in muscle groups like such as the rotator cuff and stuff that I don't want to do. And I've talked about this a lot in the secrets of training back videos, but I noticed that when I go a little bit wider and I'm like more like a medium grip, not super wide, but a medium grip, even though it looks stupid because when I come up to the top, it doesn't look like I'm actually coming up that far. I actually get more of a stretch in the parts of my back that I want to hit. So you might have to adjust your grip around. Don't be afraid to adjust your grip around. It's not like there's one grip that is the perfect one. There is the one grip that's the perfect one for you though. And it's important for you to find that. And the only way you'll find that is by honing in your feeling, right? You have to feel the force in the muscle. You know, you have to feel where that tension is. And if you notice that the tension is transferring everywhere except for the lats, well, guess what? Those are the areas that are actually getting the stress, not the lats themselves. So if you want to learn how to train a back or if you want to learn how to build a back, you have to make sure that you're really feeling the tension there. Now, I'm not talking about making exercises super slow or super strict in order for this to happen. But what I'm saying is if you're locked into a certain way of pulling because of correct form or say you're trying to touch your chest with the bar or you're trying to uh, lock out of the top because you have this ideal, but yet you're noticing that your lats are not getting or, or not hitting failure or not getting stimulated, well then that form cannot be right even though it looks pretty and even though it might be correct according to some other standard. But the standard that you're trying to meet here is bodybuilding. You're trying to say, how do I stimulate a certain muscle? And that has to be your first priority. So that's the difference between bodybuilding and somebody just doing an exercise and saying, oh, I did the exercise correctly. Like I'm not cheating and, and I got 10 reps doing full lockouts and full touches the chest to the floor or maybe touching the bar to my chest when I do a lat pull down. That's a different way of measuring and it's not necessarily going to help your bodybuilding. If anything, it is going to impede it because you're going to get stuck in doing things that are not necessarily in alignment with your goals.
So as you can see, I'm messing around with the rep speed here. I like to do faster reps most of the time, but sometimes I'll do some slow negatives because this helps hit different muscle fibers. So I do recommend doing this from time to time. And then of course I do a bunch of pumping fast kind of cheat reps at the end just to hit that deeper level of failure. But uh, yeah, it's a way of funking it up. And funny enough, that's also the name of this song that's playing in the background right now. my version of the two-day split right now I'm doing chest back and biceps in a workout I didn't do quite as many sets for biceps but I did do quite a bit for chest pretty heavy sets actually with the flat dumbbells there then I went and did some bent over rows with dumbbells and then I did some lat pull downs and I showed you two variations the narrow and the wider grip and I also showed you what it looks like when I come all the way up to the top or when I keep the tension on the lat there is a difference between the two so I do keep the tension on the lat for obvious reasons I want the lats to get bigger I don't want to just hang off their arms uh, because then I'm going to be working a little bit more of the shoulders or biceps or maybe putting strain on the shoulder joint. So there's a bunch of different reasons why I'm doing the lat pull down the way I do do it, but that's how I got the back development that I have. And then I went to finish it off with some bicep curls on the incline and I decided to do them slow today because I haven't done slow reps on the incline for a while. So I thought I'm going to do a set of faster reps and then I'm going to slow them down for a few sets. So I did about two to three sets of slower reps with the 30 pound dumbbells. So I hope you like this workout. Thanks a lot for watching. If you need to get hold of me, just go to naturallinebodybuilding.com and thanks a lot to the Patreon supporters and take care for now. Oh, oh yeah, and share my stuff. There's no mountain around here right now. I would have said mountain, but there's no mountain. You can't see it, it's nighttime. So I'm gonna get some uh, chicken and some rice with my brother. Mountain. 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 Go